Alrighty. Whoops. Better get this thing plugged in. Boom. Alrighty. Praise the Lord, guys. Everybody doing good? Amen. Well, I love you dearly. Talking with Sean, he's about got a new code to pop up. Who's ready for a new Bible code? Anybody? Amen. Oh, Vondo says uh, that we have been kicked off of YouTube for seven days for a video we did back in October. An hour and 15 minute video and less than 15 seconds, we were referring to the you know what, and they don't like it when you refer to the you know what. And uh, un uncool. they're just looking, they're looking to ban folks, guys. There's something coming down the pike this week, big. And uh, they're just looking for trouble. They're looking for trouble starters. You and me are considered that to them. And uh, we don't start troubles. We just tell them what's, we tell you what they're doing. They don't like us to know what they're doing. And that's what watchmen do. We get on top of the watchtower. We look at their evil and we say, hey guys, they're doing some evil over here. And they don't like that for some reason. They like to do the evil, but they don't like the men of God saying they're doing the evil. Catch our nightly Bible studies, Vondo says, on BitChute. BitChute and Fault Line Grace. Uh, he's got the link right there. And that's where you can find this is on BitChute. Oh, man. I love you guys dearly. I love you dearly. Um, we are in the middle of a mess, a lie. And they're coming at us. You know, with Trump being in Waco, Texas, you guys remember that movie about him? In the 1958, a con man comes to town, to a cowboy town. That town's in Texas, and it's like 30 miles from Waco. And Trump is going to build a tower and save the people and protect the people in this. You guys remember that movie, 1958? Lila, I'm so ready to go home too, sister. Praise the Lord. Let's go home. God bless you, Kush. Amen. I am so ready to go home. It just, it's crazy. I'm so thankful to be going home with y'all, man. You can kiss this place goodbye, Trump in Texas. <laughs> yep. And that whole 1958 movie, guys, was based on this whole story. And at the end, leaving town, Trump gets shot. Okay? Trump is a Trojan horse for the conservative to track and trace. Right, right. Yeah, he, he, he's the one that gets everybody's, all the moles, to raise their heads so they can whack a mole. When they ask, okay guys, uh, who likes, who likes Trump? Me! Boom, 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 boom. And they're collecting all the info on everybody. Vano's got the link up there for Bible Codes Unsealed. Make sure you get that downloaded. Sean's got some business to take care of in the next couple days concerning his mother's home going. The Lord's given him a lot of blessings, man. Just a lot of signs, encouragement, uh, at this time, the people he's meeting, the names, the numbers, everything is just God saying, that a boy. And I love that. God is awesome, man. And Vondo puts up the countdown to the crucifixion. That was the original crucifixion date in AD 30 was, we've got on there the 17th. Now, we were looking at the, the 19th on the... Um, Julian calendar and the 17th on the Gregorian calendar, but it seems like it might be the 17th on the Julian calendar and the 15th on the Gregorian calendar, two days earlier than we thought. Okay, that's what it looks like. And what is that? That's a big day. April 15th in the United States is when the bill collectors come a collecting the income tax. <laughs> it's a big day. It's always been a satanic ritual day. At the end of our YouTube ban, Vondo says he will do a mass upload and get all these sermons on there. Praise God. Thank you, bro. Appreciate your work. Appreciate your labor. It looks like our friend has just put up a code. The Beast, B. Obama, the Tribulation, the Shepherd's Limb, as in his arm, his limb. 
The Beast, B. Obama, The Tribulation, The Shepherd's Limb. This ought to be very exciting. I'm going to open that dude up and see what Sean says. Oh, I got to put a big fat love on there. You know why I put a big fat love on there without even knowing it? Because you always love God's word. Sean says, just a sec, bro. Okay, just a sec. So, uh, everybody around the world, we, we've got these 10 kings ready to offer their power. He forgot something. Give him a minute. He's going to make a correction. Cool. Cool. The suspense. That's what I like. Suspense in the videos. Um, the 10 kings are ready to give over their power to the beast. Okay. This thing is so close. It's right here. It's ready to go down a throwdown. Okay. The throwdown's about to go down. And praise God, we're about to go up. You give me the go up part. Okay, they can have the throwdown showdown. You just give me the caught up harpazo. I'm into this 726 thing. Amen. Ain't you? Praise the Lord. All right. So, does anybody have any Bible questions? I've not heard from Cheryl, guys. Has anybody heard from Cheryl? We answered her question last night, but I, I've not heard from her. Uh, maybe she was going to check it out on YouTube. Vondo went to upload on YouTube last night is when he found out, hey, guys, you had, you know, 14 seconds worth of stuff where your guy was making innuendo towards a thingy that we don't like y'all talking about. And so he went and he, what do you say, Vondo? What was it you do to him? Uh, he went and kind of argued the thing and they refused his argument and they kept us closed down. They've got to keep us closed down. Because of the news we're telling you, like this Trump thing, like this setup thing from 1958 till now. And he's all part of it. Okay. Appealed. He, he tried to appeal it. Vondo tried to appeal it. And they said, nope, sorry about that. So they want us closed down. They want us shut off a YouTube for seven days. So something is up. Just be looking. So what that means is be looking. Okay. I've told you about my friend and his, uh, his divorce and you know he's been going through a beat down his wife's crazy guys she's cussing him out on the phone and text and everything else and it's just it's insane pray for him pray for a quick turnaround a rapture would be great even so come lord jesus okay you know what i'm gonna go ahead and refresh this thing myself because sean just said it is ready freddy and for you gals it's ready betty Let's look at this thing. All right. New Biblios code. Come on, man. Bam. All right. The Beast. B. Obama. The Tribulation. The Shepherd's Limb. I mean, this is just now. This is a fresh upload right now. He just refreshed it. And uh, boom. Let's check it out. I love it. I love God's word, man. I'm in a conversation with a guy. These guys, so they're lost. That's why they don't get it. But I still post anyway. And what I posted was the same one I posted on my page, which was, hey, guys, get your dates right. The uh, resurrection day is actually May 21st. Okay. And prove that in the Bible. I want to see it in the Bible. If I don't see it in the Bible, then I don't see it. I'm like, it's in the Bible, it's Bible codes, it's only from the Bible. And proud, arrogant dude, and I told him, and I said, your pride is going to send you straight to hell. And he says, Before, don't you judge me, I only get stuff from the Bible. I'm like, okay, well, the Bible's judging you, and God told me to judge you with righteous judgment. Guys, you know righteous judgment, when God really throws down on some righteous judgment, he's going to be throwing all the sinners into hell, and all the nations that forget God, Okay. So Sean says, hey, this code is another incredible pictograph of the idol shepherd Barack Obama and his withered arm. The primary goal of false shepherds like Barack Obama is to lead their flocks into a trap of eternal damnation. This is not a minor issue, folks. This is massive major. That's what a false shepherd does. He leads his people to hell. Okay. Man, there's a whole lot of those out there. Been fighting them, battling them, and people defending them. How can you say that that Vincent Weinert dude, I, I don't even know how to say his last name, 
but Vincent, this guy's been around for years, making dates, claimants, all wrong, 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 wrong. His salvation is wrong. He believes in, you know, partial rapture. And, other, and so I just said, hey, I warned, I said, hey, this guy, you know, he's a devil. Watch out for him. And then she come back with this, I don't know how many paragraphs it was, the thing kept going about, oh, he, he's been my friend for years. I'm like, okay, so you have believed the lie and he's leading you straight to hell. So block. All right. The primary goal of false shepherds like Barack Obama is to lead their flocks into a trap of eternal damnation. This is not a minor issue. This is of utmost importance. As believers of Jesus Christ, we need to be mindful of these ministers of Satan while marking and avoiding them to protect God's people, especially the babes in Christ from their deception. And that's what a big part of this ministry is, warning you of the bad guys, warning you of the evil shepherds, warning you of people who are leading you astray from the Lord, our true shepherd. Okay, I, I know we're his bride, and we're not the sheep of his pasture and all that, but he's a good shepherd, and he leads well, and my sheep hear my voice. That's talking about the Jews, okay? They refuse to hear him the first time, but they will the second time after Sean's got to preach to them, okay, and getting him the word. They will be listening for his voice. The word of God is his voice, okay? And we want you to read the word of God and do what it says and hear God's voice in that. Hear the Holy Spirit say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's right, mm-hmm, as you're reading the Bible, 10 to 20 chapters a day, okay? So it's very important as believers of Jesus Christ, we need to be mindful of these ministers of Satan while marking and avoiding them. Mark and avoid. Mark and avoid. That's what we do here. To protect God's people, especially the babies in Christ Jesus from their deception. That's the people who were fresh, freshly saved. They've just gotten saved. Now we got to high track, high speed, fast track their discipleship and take them deep as fast as possible in the truth so they won't get out of it quickly. You just start preaching love, love, love to them. The enemy's got them. Okay. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, be sober. There's that again. All these Pentecostals want to be drunk in the spirit. Oh, we got drunk in the spirit last night. You're of the devil. The Holy Spirit commanded you to be sober and vigilant, watching, on the lookout. And these Pentecostals just follow blindly these false shepherds. And boy, we got drunk last night. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. This verse suggests that the devil is always looking for opportunities to tempt and trap the children of God into sin. Always, guys. Me. Me. You. All of us. He's always on the prowl. He's always looking for just a small opening, man. That's all he needs for an arrow. The wiles of the devil. Okay? So we got to keep reading the word. We got to encourage each other. We got to look out for the false guys. Okay? So, yeah. The devil can lay snares in many ways, including through temptation, deception, and persecution. He may try to entice us with power, wealth, or pleasure to create doubt or confusion in the minds, causing them to question their faith or moral values. He may also try to discredit or persecute them in order to undermine their credibility and effectiveness in spreading God's word. However, the Bible also teaches that we can resist the devil's snares through prayer, faith, and the power of the Holy Spirit. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This verse emphasizes the importance of relying on God's strength and wisdom to resist temptation and overcome the devil's snares that he sets for us. Amen. Hey, Karen, blessings to you as well. God bless you. We're looking at Sean's brand new code. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. This verse emphasizes the importance of relying on God's strength and wisdom to resist temptation and overcome the devil's snares. Zechariah eleven seventeen says, Woe, woe, that means judgment, warning, woe, cursing. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. That means he's going to lose his eyeball. Okay? Revelation 13, 
verses 16 to 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man can buy or sell except he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. That's the number of man. That's the number of the beast. That's the number of this Barack Obama. Just let's look at this translation of this code. It says, the beast is Barack Obama. Okay, will you just go with that? We have hundreds of codes saying this. These big time Bible guys still act like they don't know who it is. Think it's some white guy from Russia, at least Europe, you know, the Rome, Roman Empire. You guys know that the Roman Empire had an eastern leg, and in Daniel's description, there were two legs of the Roman Empire, and these people forget that. And the Muslim leg, the eastern leg, lasted 1,000 years past the white boy leg. Okay? Barack Obama is of the Roman Empire, but he's a black dude from America, not a white guy from Russia. All right? So let's start at that again. The translation of this brand new code, just hot off the presses. The beast is Barack Obama. The shepherd's limb is Satan up on the right arm, his right side, right arm. 666 is withered. Now, all the way through the Bible codes, his code name, his name is 666. Barack Obama is 666. And the Bible code tells us in the plain text, you'll know this man, the number of, of this man is, is 666, okay? Calamity for the tribulation. Mm. The snare of Satan by whom they have been trapped to his will. Man, I like the look of that. The snare of Satan by whom they have been trapped to his will. That looks good, Sean. Very good looking. Very good looking. See what the ELS is on that thing. Bam. That's the skips. Wow. 5,172. The beast. 5,172. Be Obama. 5,172, the shepherd's limb. Wow. Praise God, guys. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know what I want to do? I want to read all of that without my commentary. Okay? This code is another incredible pictograph of the idle shepherd, Barack Obama, and his withered arm. The primary goal of false shepherds like Barack Obama is to lead their flocks into the trap of eternal damnation. This is not a minor issue. This is of utmost importance. As believers of Jesus Christ, we need to be mindful of these ministers of Satan while marking and avoiding them to protect God's people, especially the babes in Christ from their deception. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. This verse suggests that the devil is always looking for opportunities to tempt and trap the children of God into sin. The devil can lay snares in many ways, including through temptation, deception, and persecution. He may try to entice us with power, wealth, or pleasure, or create doubt or confusion in the minds, causing them to question their faith or moral values. He may also try to discredit or persecute them in order to undermine their credibility and effectiveness in spreading God's word. However, the Bible also teaches that we can resist the devil, hallelujah, his snares through prayer, faith, and power of the Holy Spirit. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This verse emphasizes the importance of relying on God's strength and wisdom to resist temptation and overcome the devil's snare. Zechariah eleven seventeen is talking about Barack Obama. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be up on his arm and up on his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly destroyed. Revelation 13, 16 to 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, 
rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hands or in their foreheads, and that no man could buy or sell save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. The code translation. The beast is B. Obama. The shepherd's limb is Satan upon the right arm or his side, right side. 666 is withered, calamity for the tribulation, the snare of Satan by whom they have been trapped to his will. Amen, guys. Uh, it's all at the same ELS, which is incredible. Amen. Amen. All those terms, guys. It's all at the same ELS. All those terms over and over and over. And you got them in, in the same line. You got the shepherd's limb and B. Obama in the same line in that skip, man. Praise God. I love it. That's a good looking code there, brother. Praise the Lord. Y'all be in prayer for Sean. Uh, as he continues on and focusing on what the Lord has for him. Time is short. That's what he told me just before we come on live. We just have a little time left, brother. Heather says, fault shepherds are never innocent in their deception. Discredit or persecute them oh, oh, to undermine their credibility in spreading the truth. Incredible. And what do we got there, Vondo? The snare of Satan by whom they have trapped to his will. Amazing that this is found in 2 Timothy 2.26. 23 through 2 Timothy 2, 26, 46. And those are the, the numbers uh, of characters, okay, in the code. That's what, that's what that's talking about, the 23 and the 46, uh, which is very interesting because it's 23 twice, guys, okay? 2 Timothy 2, 26 says that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Amen. Incredible. Guys, the devil's the devil's after you, okay? He's after you. And he's after every one of us. He's after every one of us. He was after Elijah, okay? Elijah just had an amazing, amazing day at church when he killed all the false prophets of Baal and the prophets of the groves and everything, the 850 of them. And then Jezebel conjures up a demon and sends his way a messenger. And man, this thing was brutal. He wasn't afraid of the men, but this this devil, this demon, had him spooked, had him freaked out, man. And he was ready to die, and he got depressed. He was suffering depression after a great victory. That's how the devil works. He's always setting traps. He never stops setting traps. And what is the Lord? He's all about delivering, freeing us from those traps. Amen? Aren't you thankful he came along and freed you from your major massive trap of sin, death, and hell through his salvation? And then every day, Satan is laying those traps for us, those snares. <clears throat> and he wants us out of commission. He wants us out of work. He doesn't want us receiving our rewards. He doesn't want us being a blessing to others. He doesn't want us um, following the Lord faithfully. You see, that's what happened to Peter. When Peter denied the Lord, the Lord come to him and he was just almost frozen. He was paralyzed. And he just, he, yeah, Lord, I, I like you. Da, da, da. And, and Jesus said, come on, buddy. I need you to help me. I need you to feed my sheep. Come on. Let's get back into this thing. And the Lord frees us from our traps that we get ourselves into. Every one of us. You know, the Bible says that Satan lays the trap, but we step in the trap because we love the bait. We're drawn away of our own lust and enticed. And then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished with you, It'll kill you dead, man. And Satan wants us all dead. Satan wants us missing out on our rewards and awards. He wants us missing out on our ministry and helping others. Guys, you're here to help other people, okay? Satanists and Americans are here for themselves. They're all in it for themselves, man. And God said, no, no, no. I don't want you to be in it for yourself. I'll take care of you. Others will take care of you. You take care of others. Amen. And that's our call. And don't fall into those snares of the devil, of the beast. And we're so close. This thing is up on us. We are right there. We're looking at April 15th. And then you count three days. That takes you to the 18th. And then you count 50 days from there. 
right? And that, that is on the actual timeline of the year when Jesus died, AD 30. Sean says, B. Obama starts in the rapture verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass uh, the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Right now he is being restrained, guys. And you, the Holy Spirit-filled believer, are that restrainer. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And so, but as soon as the handcuffs are off, as soon as we're raptured, whew, it's going to be so bad for this world. And that's what they wanted. That was their trap. They will be snared. Now, many are going to die in that first hour. Many are going to die in that first hour when God takes out New York City and uh, America. Babylon's head, okay? Babylon's head. We are the ones who make every merchant on earth happy because we in our materialism buy all their crap. We're the ones with all the dollar stores from China. China owns the dollar stores, folks. Walmart will be used for prison camps, FEMA's, and the Costco's and all those concrete buildings that have no windows in them. They were built to be prisons and they've located them strategically all across the United States and Canada. Sean has one right there by his house in Canada. I got I got two right here in, in my town, and my state is the headquarters, the world headquarters. And Mr. Walmart, oh, what was his name, Fondo? Walton? I, I can't even think of his name. Um, he was in charge of prisoners of war in World War II, and he was trained by the military to build prisons. Sam Walton. Thank you, buddy. Sam Walton. And the Sam's buildings as well. Costco, Sam's, Walmart, all of them, the super Walmarts, they're all going to be FEMA camp prison houses for those who need shelter and, and a place to stay and a little food. Y'all come here and then they're going to do whatever they got to do to them. This is right after the rapture right when the devastation has happened in America. And most of Americans will die. I, I'm thinking most because I believe they're going to hit this. You know, when the Revelation talks about um, Babylon going up and being toasted in an hour, that's the head of Babylon. That's the head of Babylon. That's us. And what did Sean show us in the Poseidon codes? That intelligent fire took out the United States, and that, that's a nuclear device. And it could be an underwater bomb creating a tsunami, or it could be the bombs landing in inland and being a massive, massive uh, atomic situation. All right, and it sounds like it's going to be that. It sounds like it's going to take out everything, but there will always be some kind of remnant, some kind of survivors. And enter your Walmarts and your Sam's Club and your Costco's and those buildings are prisons. You look at them. Next time you go into one of those buildings, you look around, and they are built just like your county jail. Just like them. Even with your gun turrets up there on the corners with the pyramids on top of them. Ready to go. Amen. And we're so close. Garrett says, man, can you explain the 50-day count from April 18th and the wooden oil? Thank you. All right, and we do have Bible codes on that, okay? Now, now this, is, this is in Jesus' day. April 18th is A.D. 30. Our count, our first day on the month this year is May 5th, which is Nisan 1. Then you get to the 17th of Nisan, which we said was the 21st, which is a Sunday. Okay, so, so, so you got Nisan 1 on the 5th. On, the, on day 10 of Nisan is when Jesus was inspected. Okay, that's when you inspect your lamb and you bring it into the home. This is your Passover lamb that you're going to slaughter. Okay, and so it comes in your home and it becomes your pet for four days. The kids love it. Everybody gets familiar with this little innocent lamb. He's so wonderful. He's awesome. And then on day four, which is the 14th day of the month, you slit his throat and eat him. Okay. And the kids get to see it. That was our friend. He was so innocent. He didn't deserve to die. And that was always a picture of Jesus. 
So on the 10th of Nisan, uh, if, if I know, is that a code about this? I, I can't see it, but Vinyl's put up a code and it's probably about the counts. And so on the day of the resurrection is a Sunday. And on that Sunday, you count 50 days and that'll land you on a Sunday. So this year, our resurrection day is the 21st of May. You count 21 days or 50 days ahead that gets you to July 9. And that is the wheat portion of Pentecost about the intelligent fire. Thanks, Vado. The, the one he just put up was about the intelligent fire lighting these nukes. And so it's going to be a water event. Um, many Bible scholars aren't aware of that because they don't like the Bible codes. They're fools and they will not study the Bible codes. So they understand the fire events being fire, fire, holocaust, fire. And the fire event is intelligent fire lighting off these nukes, going to blow water into our coastlines and drown everybody, kill them in their sleep. And then there will be fire as well, but not fire only. Intelligent fire igniting, detonating the nukes. Okay? Praise God. So, Gary, back to your question. Uh, on the day of the resurrection, you count 50, and that gets you to the wheat. That'll be a Sunday. Pentecost. Penta is 50. 50-day 50 counts. Well, for years, we always thought that was it. But the temple scroll, help me, Vondo, 11Q19, they found the temple scroll 11Q19, and mostly in column 23. Imagine that. This is 2023. Uh, May, May 5th will be the first day of God's calendar of 2023. And so on the temple scroll, 11 means mystery. Q is the 17th letter, which means victory. And 19 is faith. Mystery, victory, faith in column 23, we found out these other portions to Shavuot or the counting of the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost. So there's three Pentecost and a six-day event, okay? So the three Pentecost begin at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You count 50, and that gets you to wheat on a Sunday. You count 50 more, that'll get you to a Sunday, and then that is the new wine, and then you count 50, that'll get you to a Sunday, and that is the fresh oil, and then you have six days of the wood offering. Vando says the temple scroll adds several additional festivals, annual or ordination of the priest. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it talks about all, all the goodies. It, it gives us all the details, and he, he's got it listed right there. It's beautiful, man. Beautiful. Boom, boom, boom. I love it. That looks good. 11Q19 and column 23, 2 to 7. Bam. That's some great information. And Sean found all that for us. He, he pointed the way to where to look. Okay, here you go. Here's where you look. And then the Bible code started flowering and building up on that and giving us a clearer picture. Details. Wonderful things. Uh, does that help, Garris? Does that help? Yeah, thank you. That's awesome. So, uh, going back to the question, summarizing, on the day of resurrection, you count 50. Then you count 50. Then you count 50. Then you have six days. There's 12 tribes. And on the first day, two tribes come in and they give all their wood, truckloads, ox oxen loads of wood, because they need wood for the sacrifices all year long. So the two tribes who have been cutting down wood all year long, they'll come in on the first day and bring their offering of wood. The second day, two more tribes will do the same thing until the sixth day when all 12 have made their offering. Amen? Yes, uh, Carlos says, does Daniel eleven thirty seven, which says he, he has no love for women, does that say that Obama's homosexual? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what it's saying. And Gary says, yes, sir. Thanks, man. This gives us an insight for the rapture window. It surely, surely does. Because God told us that he's going to rapture us in the spring, Pentecost. Now, we also know that we live in the age of Pentecost. Jesus fulfilled the first three feasts when he was here 1,993 years ago. Okay? 
This April 15th will be the day that he, uh, the, the anniversary, 1,993 years, 1993 years ago, that he died on the cross for us and he fulfilled that first feast, Passover. He was the Passover lamb. He was observed uh, and we turn people to him. We say, hey guys, will you look? Will you see? Jesus is God. And they can observe and then they make a choice. Yes, he's my Passover lamb. And then that was his death. And then he was buried. And that's the very next day. That, that The death is the 14th of Nisan, the 14th day of the year. And the 15th day of the year is when they buried him. And then on the 17th day of the year is when he rose from the dead. So he was buried 15, 16, and 17. Three days, three days and three nights. And then he rose on the 17th, and that's the Feast of First Fruits. And Jesus fulfilled all three of those. They rehearsed them and practiced them for 1,500 years from Moses. And they did it every year, every year. And by the time Jesus got here, most people lost what it meant. And they just had him a festival. Easter, let's have Easter. And they don't. They forgot all about the sacrificed lamb, Okay. And so they totally missed it when Jesus was here. There he is dying on a cross and people are hustle bustling in from all over the world because they were commanded to be in Jerusalem for Passover. All the men were. And so they were hurrying to Jerusalem, passing this guy dying and so they can get to church. Because they heard there was going to be an awesome church service and totally missed Jesus. Just like most people do every Sunday when they're at the church service, they miss Jesus. And there he was dying on that cross. And then they were just having a hoe down and a throw down. And Jesus, guys, when Jesus said it is finished and died, he died at the exact time that they were slaughtering the lambs down at the temple. They had done it every year, every year, every year for 1,500 years. And there's the real lamb dying before the foundation of the world, slain before the foundation of the world. And they missed it, but not all missed it. And then there was that resurrection that changed everything. That's why we encourage people. That's why Paul tells you to. That's why God tells you from heaven, says, if you're going to be saved now, you better get past Mark. You better get past Acts 2. And you better get on to the rest of the books that came later because they're very important. They have to do with the Gentile bride, you, the church, the body of Christ. And we believe. And we believe what? In the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you look at Leviticus 23, write that note, write that note, write that note. Leviticus 23 presents, God presents, all seven of those special events, those special days, those moeds, dress rehearsals, holy convocations. They're all dress rehearsals for a real event. And they dress rehearsed for 1,500 years, and the real events took place. Then 50 days later, the fourth one was initiated. It wasn't completed because Jesus, the man, the son of man, the son of God himself, the physical Jesus, the second person in the Trinity is the one who completes and fulfills all seven of those. And he was ominously missing for 10 days. He ascended to heaven 10 days earlier before Pentecost. So he, it wasn't fulfilled. Everybody preaches that Pentecost has been fulfilled. And now we're looking for Jesus to rapture us at the Feast of Trumpets in September, October. And that's all wrong. He initiated the church age by sending the Holy Spirit. The church was planted officially on that date. And it will be harvested on that date. And it's going to be Jesus himself that we meet in the air. The harvested will meet the harvester in the air. The man Christ Jesus, the second one in the Tri Trinity, the triune being, not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't the one that completes these, fulfills these, but he did initiate ours. The Feast of Pentecost. And we, we knew that he was going to rapture us last Pentecost. We knew it. But what God was showing us is... Your day counts are wrong. Your calendar's 45 days off. We got to get that corrected because I'm going to rapture you on the exact date. Okay, not the fake calendar, not, not the 45 days off calendar, but the right one. So I am going to rapture you, Visa Pentecost, spring rapture, and uh, you got to have your calendar ready. And in the meantime, he showed us the very week that he died. April 15th is when he died. 
April 18th is when he rose from the dead. Count 50 days from there, that was when Passover landed. We believe it was at the wheat festival because that's when the men came back. And those men, that all the men who were required, they had to, they had to be there for Passover and they had to be there for Pentecost, which is Shava Oat, Feast of Weeks, and they had to be there for Tabernacles. It was required that all men be there. And so Peter is preaching on the day of Pentecost, and that's when the Holy Spirit gave the evidence of tongues, the evidence of fire above their heads. And it was signs because Jews require a sign. And then he began to preach to the same people who were there 53 days earlier. And said, that man that was hanging on the cross that day that you all passed, y'all remember him? But there were two thieves. There was three of them hanging there that day. There was hardly any men around him because they all fled like babies, but the women were there. You'll see one, the youngest, John, he came back. He was there. Do y'all remember that? That was your Jesus. That was your Savior. That was your Messiah, Yeshua, the salvation of Yah. And he preached that sermon and 3,000 souls were planted that day. And since we've had 2,000 years, 1,993 years of people dying in Christ Jesus, they're called, referred to as the dead in Christ. You and I who are living, we're the living in Christ. Those which are alive when we remain living. We, we haven't died yet. So there's going to be a, a resurrection of the dead church and the living church who's all the church. We're all the bride of Christ. We're all... In the Pentecost age, it was initiated when the Holy Spirit came down 53 days after Passover, 50 days after the resurrection, boom, and we've been going for 1,993 years, and we believe, really believe that is right here, the Lord is going to rapture us this Pentecost season, and there's only seven years left of that tribulation, and that'll be the end of the 2,000-year dispensation of Jesus Christ. And then he'll take his physical rule. You and I have lived in the kingdom of God. It's a kingdom of faith where Jesus is king. Now, a lot of folks who are saved and going to heaven have never made him their king, but he is their savior. You can't go to heaven without him being your savior. You must be born again. Uh, Heather says, hallelujah. Thank God for the Passover lamb. Bono says, Jesus must be the one who completes each feast. Amen, guys. That's the story. And these guys got it all wrong. Oh, the Holy Spirit completed that, so four have been completed. No way. No way. This, this light has been burning. Only four lights are lit, guys. There's three more to light. Okay? And Jesus will fulfill it himself. Okay? The others happened in an, in an instant. Passover happened in, you know, it took a day, and then the burial, it took less than 24 hours for him to bury him, unleavened bread, and then first fruits was three days later, and so that one weekend covered those first three. They were fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the man Christ, the man chosen, the man anointed, the God man, and this fourth one will be fulfilled with him. It's a resurrection. It has always been a harvest festival, guys. Pentecost is harvest. It's not planting. If you can understand that simple truth, the Holy Spirit planted, but Pentecost is all about the harvest. So is Passover. Passover is about the barley harvest. Pentecost is about the wheat harvest. And now we've also learned about the grape harvest and the olive harvest and the wood offerings. All in Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks. You just keep counting the weeks. Three times over, three times 50 plus six. And there we are. And then the Feast of Tabernacles is the feast of all the summer fruits. And then it's a praising God for the other two harvests, for the annual harvest. And that was the requirement. And the women and the children had to come every seven years on the Feast of Tabernacles to hear the Word of God read, Matthew through Deuteronomy. And they were so blessed. Amen. And that's where we find ourselves, guys. We're almost at the end of what they call March, and then April will be here. And April 17th slash 15, uh, I was, we were saying 1917, but it's actually 1715. The 17's right. 
And the 15th just gets us two days closer, okay? And because the 17th, what we were looking at, it was a Wednesday, but remember, they've changed the calendar, okay? So it's no, it's no longer a Wednesday, and it never was a Wednesday. It was the fourth day of the week kind of a thing, you know? Remember, you had your four days of inspection. Sunday, he was inspected, and four days later on Wednesday, he was killed. Uh, Carlos says, I think it was Dr. Barry Aw. Uh, ugh. 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 Don't watch Barry Aw. Uh. Do not watch that guy. He is one of those. He's one of those. Guys, he refers to people who aren't even saved. Oh, Dr. Sandy taught me this one. Dr. Sandy taught me this. Ugh, yuck. And uh, he says we're part of the, of the barley harvest. That was the Old Testament saints. Okay, the Old Testament saints were the barley harvest. They, they were, when they died, Abel, he was the first one to go to paradise. He was the first one in Abraham's bosom before there was an Abraham. Okay, he went downward and that was paradise because they couldn't go in the presence of God because Jesus hadn't poured his blood out on the altar yet, on the uh, Ark of the Covenant. The mercy seat. God's wonderful mercy. They're new every morning. Aren't you thankful for his mercies that are new every morning? He only wants you to have victory, guys. He wants you in heaven if you're lost, and he wants you having rewards in heaven if you're saved. He wants to give, 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 give you, and he's helping you out every way he, he wills. And he's always wanting to reconcile men to himself. He's wanting to pull men out of traps that they've allowed themselves to get in because they have loved the bait. We're encouraging you to hate Satan's bait. Find out what Satan's bait is in your life and stay away from that and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Love him. And when you do take the bait because you're still stupid, you're a retard. That's why you need a savior. He'll come and he'll save you again and again and again. Now we're once saved, always saved, always going to heaven. But sometimes we act like stupid loser fools. And God comes along and his mercies are new every day. And he pulls us out of those traps. And that's why we warn people about those traps. Jesus is always reconciling us. So the first harvest, everybody went to the holding place. Everybody went to paradise, Abraham's bosom. And when Jesus went downward for those three days while he was in uh, the tomb, he went downward and he preached to the souls in the lower parts. There's three sections of souls in the lower parts, spirits. One is paradise, Abraham's bosom. One is hell, where the rich man went. Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. Lazarus went to hell. And then all the demons, the fallen angels who God had to put on lockdown in Tartarus. Okay? That was the three groups that Jesus went and preached to. And he preached an appropriate sermon to each group, including the same story. I'm about to bust out of here in three days. I'm about to bust out of here in two days. I'm about to bust out of here in one day. And guess what? You stay, Tartarus. You stay, Hellions. But paradise, Abraham's bosom, I'm taking you to heaven with me, buddy. And that was the first harvest of spirits, of souls into heaven. The barley harvest. The Old Testament saints. Now we're waiting that wheat harvest. Now, the pre-trib rapture will take all of us, the bride of Christ, out, but then there's still going to be people being saved, and they're going to have to have the tribulum over their back, the, tri the tribulation of the tribulum, war, pestilence, everything, which, which is going to draw them to their understanding that I need a Savior now. They didn't realize it before, but they'll realize it then. And they're still part of the wheat. They're still part of the wheat harvest, okay? And then when Jesus comes back, Boom, he's going to tread out all the evil. Uh, that's part of your grape harvest. He's going to stomp the grapes, man. Who, who's this that cometh from Basra? It looks like he's been stomping the grapes with all this blood all over him. Okay? That's the grapes of wrath. The, the wine of his indignation when he goes to stomping those grapes. That's all the enemies of God. Okay? Everybody got a clear picture on that? Alicia says, Amen, Lamentations 3. His mercies are new every morning, and great is thy faithfulness. Oh, God, my Father. Amen. There's no shadow of turning with thee. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Vano says, Man, harvesting and processing. 
an implement known as a tribulum, a wooden framework with bits of flint and metal fixed to the underside, hauled over the grain. So what you do, barley is really light in its hull, its husks, its uh, straw. Okay, so all it needs is a winnowing fan. All you got to do is throw it up and it, it's so loose that the seeds will separate itself by themselves. It doesn't need to be beat out mostly. It doesn't need a tribulum. But, but wheat is hard. It's, it's um, hardy. It's sturdy. Okay, and so it's solid. And so they take the wheat and they throw it down on the threshing floor, a cement pad, a gravel pad, a hardened uh clay pad and they set it down there and then they take an oxen with this tribulum device and they hook the tribulum device to the oxen and it goes on top of the wheat and a man stands on top of it adding more weight and they it goes around and around and around crushing up the wheat loosening the uh, fruit or the seed or the corn that's what god called it they were walking and grabbing corn you know it's called kernels, kernels of corn in the wheat. And so it must be opened up with a tribulum, tribulation. And that's what's going to be happening to the tribulation saints who are also part of the wheat harvest because it's Jesus Christ. And then gathers on in and everybody who's evil. Remember, there's when Jesus comes back on the day of the Lord, he's going to be crushing and stomping grapes. At the end of the millennium, he will crush and stomp grapes. So that'll be all... The Feast of Tabernacles, that's what the Feast of Tabernacles is all about, is the, is the, um, the harvest of the fruits, uh, the fruit on the vine, you know, and figs and everything else. And so it, it, all the harvest comes in, but the Christians are not the barley there, Dr. Awe. We are the wheat. We're, we, are, we are of the, guys, because there's seven years left, right, after we're raptured. There's still wheat to be harvested. We're the early wheat. Remember, all the fields we talked about are harvested in three sections. The barley, you take the ripest portion, you tie it into a sheave, and you take it down to the temple on the 17th day of the month, which is the resurrection day, which is first fruits. And the high priest would wave your sheave to the Lord. Lord, he's giving to this to you as a wave offering as you get the first portion before he ever cuts another uh, blade with a sickle. And is given to the Lord. And then he heads on back to the house and starts harvesting the main field. And they leave the four corners for the poor, the widows, the strangers, and the orphans, the fatherless, okay? And it's the same way with the wheat. The wheat is the first fruits, and what, what Jesus tells us, he is the first fruits of all those who would resurrect. So he's the first fruits of the barley, and he's the first fruit of the wheat, and he's the first fruit of the fruit, okay? Jesus is the first fruit of every bit of it. And then the main fields, the, the main barley harvest was those who were released from paradise. Boom. That was one action, okay? But the people who die in the tribulation, though they're the wheat, they're not the bride. The bride's cut, cut off at the pre-trib rapture. They are included in the group of the Old Testament saints, the people who die in the tribulation. They will all be resurrected in their bodies together, okay? You and I are resurrected first. The last shall be first. The Jews came first. They had the blessings. They had the... Word of God, they had all 66 books, and they killed Jesus and his prophets. So Jesus went to the Gentiles, the Gentile bride. Now we are saved by believing. We don't have to go to Jerusalem. I just have to believe where I'm at, and I'm saved. We begin to read that Bible. We, we begin to fast-track people in discipleship. That's the purpose of this class right here every night, is to encourage you, to keep you going, and also maybe you can grow a little bit. As we go, learn, learn some things. Walk, Have a tighter, more holy. That means you're walking with Jesus and not Jesus and something else. Jesus and your TV. Jesus and your altars. Jesus and your hobbies. Jesus and your... You give up everything that is taking your time away from Jesus and your rewards. Remember the traps we were talking about? This Bible code? Talking about the snares of the devil? And we got to mark and avoid people who are cool with you stepping into traps? 
And we say, get rid of that. And you need to listen to godly shepherds who are shepherding you towards the things of heaven and pleasing the Lord Jesus and encouraging you to get your crowns so you can cast them at his feet. That's who you follow. You follow people of the word. And Barry Aw saying that the Christians are part of the barley harvest. He's so off, dude. He is so off. He is so overstudied that he's got it all wrong. He's on the wrong calendar. Oh, this date here, and this is going to happen here, and the, the rapture here. And it's, dude, you're 45 days off, bro. And then they come, well, I, we, we just found out that we're a month off. You're not 30 days off, buddy. You're 45 days off. It's not the crescent Muslim moon. It's the full Jesus moon. The one who lights up the night. Hello? And get your calendar right. If you get your calendar right, you'll get your Passover right. And if you get your Passover right, you'll have your unleavened bread right. And if you get your unleavened bread right, you'll have your first fruits right. And if you have your first fruits right, you'll have your Pentecost right. And your Pentecost right. And your Pentecost right. And your six days of wood offering right. And your tabernacles right. After your Feast of Trumpets, Jesus' birthday, get that right. Okay? Get rid of your Christmas trees. Get rid of your Easter bunnies. Get rid of all the stuff on the bad calendar, the satanic calendar, the Antichrist calendar that Daniel told us the Antichrist spirit would be in charge of, and he would change dates and times and laws. Remember that? And we get back in line with God and his calendar. The one he gave us in Leviticus 23, and the one he let us find in the last days in the temple scroll, 11Q19. Columns 23. What year will it be? May 21st, 2023. That's first fruits. And then we count 50 days. July 9, that's 23. Pentecost, 23. We learned the, the feasts of Pentecost, the, the two extras that we didn't even know. Praise God. And he taught us those things and the wood offering. Man, we didn't know that. How powerful is the wood offering? How in the world are you going to have a burnt offering without the wood? How in the world is Jesus going to be a burnt offering without the cross? Everything's so vital, man. Everything points to Jesus. Everything points to your redemption. Everything points to your being saved if you'll place your trust in the Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God himself who left heaven and came here. And he lived a perfect life for 33 and a half years and died and your trust is not in a living man. Do not put your confidence in man, but, but put your trust in a dead Jesus. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. He didn't stay dead. Praise God, but you have to place your faith in all three of those segments. The death, a dead Savior. How can a dead Savior save? Just wait. Just trust what I'm saying. The burial. He's been dead three days. I mean, the boys on the road to Emmaus, Uncle Cleopas and them, thought it was over, man. Three days he's been dead. Let's head on back to the house. Let's get on back to Emmaus. And Jesus showed up walking with them because this wasn't your normal dead man who's buried. He's come alive again of his own power. And now he says, you can have that power. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And the purpose of that power is not to act like snakes and bark like dogs and act a fool and shake like you're in the middle of an earthquake. The purpose of that power is that you might win souls, that you might be a witness unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. Amen. Uh, Heather says it's all, every bit of it, all about Jesus. And it's all about the blood. All of it. Nothing about us. Praise God. We're the sinners in need of a Savior. We're the ones who get stuck in traps needing somebody to come release us from that trap. Praise God. Aren't you thankful for our Jesus who comes a running every day when we call on him, Papa, Jesus, help me, Jesus, please. He comes a running. Because he's a specialty at releasing us from the traps we got ourselves into. Because he loves us and he wants us to learn from it. And now go on and grow on. Barry all, man. He and guys like him. They're on the wrong calendar. How can they be right? How, two and a half hours of teaching wrong. Pastor Sandy's going straight to hell. 
straight to hell because he's trusting in his righteousness to keep him saved. And he abhors, disdains once saved, always saved. Now, dude, that means you disdain the God who gave us once saved, always saved. Amen? Get on the right calendar. Hey, guys, I love you, man. We're going to call it a night. I love this new code. Let's read the translation one more time. The beast is B. Obama. You idiots who will not believe us are so, you're so foolish. And what did the Bible say about you who won't believe the Bible codes? It says you're wicked and an abomination. Yeah. Carlos says, doesn't he believe you can walk away from your salvation? Yep. That makes you lost. That makes you lost. That makes you never have been saved by the Jesus of Nazareth who sends his Holy Spirit inside of you and seals himself up. You know what uh, Dr. Awe preaches? That saved people don't have the Holy Spirit in them. We're not sealed with the Holy Spirit. He doesn't come inside of us and seal himself in. He just hits us with his seal so the devil can see his seal from a distance. The Bible tells us that God gave us the Holy Spirit as an earnest payment, a down payment, a promise that he's going to come and redeem us. Barry Awe is lost as a goose. Barry Awe is as lost as Pastor Sandy is. Because when a man truly places his faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit of God, God, the third person in the Trinity, comes inside of you and seals himself in to connect you to all things Jesus, to Jesus himself on his throne in heaven, who's ever living to make intercession for you. Amen? Amen. And the Holy Spirit brings heaven to us. He works in the role of a prophet and a priest. He takes us to Jesus Jesus is the only way to the Father, and it's the Holy Spirit who gives us, he's the highway. He, he is the connector. He's the, uh, the wiring from the switch to the light, okay? And you're the switch, and if it's going to connect to the Lord, it has, there has to be the Holy Spirit inside of you, or you'll never make it to Jesus. And if you don't make it to Jesus, you surely won't make it to the Father. Jesus said there's only one mediator between God and men, and that's the man Christ Jesus. The man. The man. He, it's the man who fulfills these feasts, guys. And everybody, everybody, I'm telling you, everybody says he fulfilled Pentecost already. And he says differently in the Bible code. You know it differently if you just use your common sense. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Just reason it out. Jesus didn't do anything on Pentecost yet. He was missing for 10 full days. And that was on purpose. Thank God for the Holy Spirit sealed inside of me. Because we'd mess it up every day. We would, man. And it's all love. It's his gifting, gifting, gifting. And these guys hate once saved, always saved, because they're not once saved, always saved. And Dr. Barry, he's, he's a doctor, and he's so stupid. He's all, ever learned, he's got a photographic memory, and he loves the fact that he can spit his stuff out without looking at his notes often, but he's wrong. His notes are wrong. You better have the right notes when you go to spitting. Amen? The notes are the Word of God. Just read the Word of God. Don't be overstudied and over stupid. okay? Because overstudy will make you stupid. You just trust the living Lord and let him teach you daily, 10 to 20 chapters a day, 10 to 20 chapters a day, he'll keep writing your ship, getting you right, calibrated with the cross daily. Every day he does that. Aren't you thankful? The Holy Spirit of God, if you're saved, is inside of you, sealed in. And he's your connection to heaven. And Jesus is everything you need. We go directly to Jesus. The Holy Spirit never preaches of himself. And all these stupid charismatics and Pentecostals, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit this and the Spirit of God showed up today. They're all wrong. They're emphasizing the third person in the Trinity who's not to be emphasized. His job is a servant. Like Eliezer was to Abraham and his purpose was to bring home a bride to the son. And his emphasis is always about the son. And he gives gifts to win the bride to the son. The Son, the Son, the Son, the second person in the Trinity. That's who the Holy Spirit emphasizes and talks about and points everybody to. So it won't be Christ, Christ, Christ to you. It'll be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus to you, the Son. Amen? 
the Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Man, I love you, man. God bless you. By his grace, keep praying for Sean. Give to Sean. Give to Sean on that link. Thank you for this new code, brother. We love it. The bad news, we're all sinners. The good news, God sent his son to change that and to turn you into a brand new creation if you'll believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Place your faith, your life, jump in the deep end of that truth. It's only his death, burial, and resurrection that saves me. And when that happens, the Holy Spirit of God comes inside of me and seals himself in until the day of redemption. Amen. And then I receive a glorified body and I'll be as just as glorified then as I am righteous now through Jesus Christ. It's his righteousness in me now and it will be his glory in me for eternity. Hallelujah. Who's ready for that? I'm ready for that. I love you guys, man. God bless you. We'll see you by God's grace tomorrow and get over there to bit shoot. Watch us. And, uh, Thank God for Vondo taking care of all that stuff for us. We love you, man. We'll see you.